These eyes. It's all part of our mission to help people. Anyone who feels like they've been left out, God has a plan for us. Or Tammy Faye. What did he tell you to do this time? God does not want us to be poor. We're not doing anything wrong, though. Is that a question? I built you an empire. I built you an empire. She's a firecracker, Jim. <laughs> put my arm around you. I want to put my arms around you, Tammy Faye. The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Ready PG-13. This week on Culture Q. We celebrate two historic wins for the trans and non-binary community. We chat with screenwriter Abe Sylvia about the biopic that brings gay icon Tammy Faye back to life. And the Buttigieg family just got bigger. I'm Andy Lawani. And I'm Cheryl Lazar. This is Culture Q. And here's some of the highlights this week in queer culture. The Paralympics ended over the weekend, and Team LGBTQ obviously made history. Not only did a record number of out athletes compete, but 20 LGBTQ competitors from around the world won medals, including five Americans. Some other historic highlights include Australia's Robin Lambert getting bronze. That's because Robin became the first out non-binary person to win at the Paralympics in the women's 100 meter T34 wheelchair sprint. Canadian soccer player Quinn also became the first out trans non-binary competitor to win gold at the Tokyo Olympics earlier this summer. Lambert described their win as a dream. I think I just want to show, you know, all the kids out there like with disabilities or not, like if you have a dream, like chase it. Don't let anyone tell you you can't. And you know, there's always a way and you can always find that way. At nine, Lambert was diagnosed with cerebral palsy and for a long time felt desexualized because of their disability. But Lambert's now a model and disability rights activist who has appeared in Tommy Hilfiger and Target campaigns. Their goal is to increase representation for disabled individuals and shift cultural ideas about sexuality. In May on Instagram, they wrote, here, queer, and ready to remind you that disabled people are hot and that mobility aids aren't a sign of tragedy. They are a source of freedom, which is totally sexy. And they definitely have a pretty good sense of humor about it all. At the podium, Lambert jokingly started to reach for the gold medal and then burst out laughing. And in another Instagram post just after their win, Lambert thanked their supporters and promised, this isn't over though, and I can't bloody wait to see what's next. Thanks for that, Shira. Now, more history was made this past Thursday when Kylie Sonique Love was crowned the new winner of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars Season 6. Love's the first American trans woman to win in the franchise history and the second in the world after Anjali Anang won the Drag Race Thailand competition in 2019. In the final episode, Love and the other remaining four contestants had to create and perform an original verse for RuPaul's song, This Is Our Country. Love wanted her verse to address the marginalization she's faced as a trans woman. I'm gonna use my twang when I need to yell and if they can't go a heaven then we're gonna raise hell. I stand real proud and so should you. Let's stand together in a red, white, and blue. The contestants were also asked to appear on RuPaul and Judge Michelle Visage's podcast called What's the Tea? where love was clear about her intentions should she win. To have that power means nothing if you're not able to help people, she said. But the win didn't show some of the challenges that were caught on camera. While lip syncing to Lady Gaga's stupid love, the unexpected happened and she shared it all on Twitter. Oh my God, I slipped on my boa and my foot got caught in my dress, she wrote. I seen everything going in slow motion and what I learned in gymnastics was when you fall, you roll out of it and make it look good. And that is exactly what love did and exactly why she won. RuPaul said, Kylie's exhilarating blend of tenacity, vulnerability, and talent made her a sizzling standout in the most compelling all-stars in the franchise's history. This win, though, is part of a bigger story. Love appeared on season two of RuPaul's Drag Race, but was eliminated for a Lady Gaga impression. During a reunion episode, Love came out as a trans woman publicly. 11 years and one full circle later, Love is the first American trans woman to win in the history of the franchise. If you did didn't know she's won a $100,000 cash prize and a spot in the Drag Race Hall of Fame. After her win, Love told Billboard, it don't matter who you are, how you identify, or where you come from. If you have a dream and you have the passion and the will to survive, then anything is possible for you. Jessica Chastain is bringing gay icon Tammy Faye to life in a new movie. 
If you didn't know, Tammy Faye was a popular televangelist alongside her husband, Jim Baker, in the 1970s. She attracted a lot of attention when her husband was convicted of fraud and conspiracy, resulting in the end of their show, The PTL Club. But Tammy Faye's own story and distinctive style is what the LGBTQ community has always admired. Tammy Faye was definitely flamboyant, and she talked about Jesus a lot. But she also preached about love for all. In fact, this televangelist attended six or seven Pride parades. She even judged a Tammy Faye look-alike contest at Washington Capitol Pride in 2002. Interestingly enough, before it was canceled, the PTL Club was also the first Christian TV show to advocate support for LGBTQ people. And it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Tammy Faye. It wasn't just tolerance, but love that she demanded. Demanded. And LGBTQ viewers tuned in as a result. And most notably, Tammy Faye interviewed gay pastor and AIDS activist and survivor Steve Peters at a time when stigma and fear made their conversation revolutionary. In the interview, Tammy Faye reaffirmed her love for the gay community and educated people on what it meant to be gay and to have AIDS. There's a lot of Christians here who would love you and who wouldn't be afraid to put their arm around you. Jessica Chastain shared she was drawn to the film because of that Peters interview. Because in a time when people were even afraid to say AIDS, we had this female televangelist. And she was a minister too in her own right. She wasn't just the preacher's wife, the singer. Taking the role of Tammy Faye also required a big transformation for the actress, including incredible prosthetics layered with Tammy Faye's signature heavy mascara and fake eyelashes. I cannot wait to check out this movie when it hits the big screen. Searchlight Pictures releases The Eyes of Tammy Faye on September 17th. Tammy Faye. What'd you do? Jesus keeps a ticking me high. I just want to love people. God does not want us to be poor. This is who I am. The Eyes of Tammy Faye, rated PG-13. Now I'm here with the film screenwriter, Abe Sylvia. Let's get into this film, which really shows another side to Tammy Faye the public might not know about. What drew you to this story? Well, her. I mean, what's not to love? This fabulous, eccentric, exuberant, dramatic, operatic character. That's gold for a writer. You can't make up Tammy Faye, this person that you could never create in a million years, then being embodied by another person you could never create in a million years, Jessica Chastain. When someone comes to you and says, hey, do you want to work on that? That's not a no. Did you know the side of her being an icon to the LGBTQ community before this? Yes, she was an icon to me as a gay kid growing up in Oklahoma in the 80s. I didn't know why I identified with her, but I did. Even if she wasn't an advocate for us, we would have been obsessed with her. She suffered so much humiliation and she kept her head held high. And I think there's a transference that was like, oh, that, that feels like my experience. You obviously knew about her and she'd impacted you so much. How deep did you go in writing this and what did you discover that surprised you that you didn't know before? That it was so much more than a sex scandal that brought them down. As I started unpacking and going deeper and deeper, the conspiracy that brought them down, had this not happened, the course of the history of the world would have been different. In 1988, when their friend, Pat Robertson, was going to run for president, they were going to support him. And in so doing, they would have pulled 30 million voters away from Bush. Their downfall was directly related to those actions. There's a direct line from them and that scandal to our last president. That's big to put out there and important with faith and religion being brought up so much in today's society, as well as it relates to the LGBTQ community, a story like this of faith that supports the community is really important. Well, I agree. I mean, when she brought Steve Peters on her television show, that was groundbreaking. People weren't doing that on secular television to bring someone on that isn't scary, that is deserving of our love. I didn't know about that till much later. I just liked her clothes and her makeup, and I thought she was kind of silly, you know? And it was only much later that I realized what a friend she was to us. With that, it's like her appearance and her outgoing nature, it could easily be judged or mocked, and how do you bring the humanity into that? We were very conscious of that the whole time. You know, let the character live their truth, come from a place of love. We're not stepping back and, and objectively telling the story. This is the story of a woman who went through some major things. And I'm not saying she was all good all the time. That is a human being there. And I think the punishment did not fit the crime. What's it like to have Jessica Chastain come to life with your words? She just did such an incredible job with this. I'm a writer and I'm speechless. 
have someone like her say my words, I mean, there are no words. And she was so committed working on this even four years before it got the green light. 10 years we've been wow. on this. There were many meetings. We spent a lot of time calming the script so that by the time she got to set, hopefully it fits her like a glove. She took a big swing and she was the engine behind this. You've already gotten a lot of buzz on the festival circuit. Congrats on Toronto Film Festival. Why do you think this story is so important right now in society and getting the recognition from critics, fans, and the community alike? There's just so much division. To make a movie about a character who sees through that and can always see the person behind it is a very powerful message. What do you hope people take away from this film? I hope people get to see it in a theater, if it's safe for everyone to do so. Tammy Faye was about love and light and community and reaching across differences and leading with love. I'm hopeful that that, first of all, that comes across, but then I'm hopeful that that can be a community experience as well. And now it's time to take a look at some of the queer news around the world. Now, if you didn't know, China's president has been moving forward on plans for a national rejuvenation of the culture, economy, and social controls. The latest? Broadcasters must promote a more revolutionary culture and ban sissy men like the K-pop stars who wear makeup on television. The country has also cracked down on any LGBTQ content on social media apps, movies, newspapers, and has even recently shut down some LGBTQ groups. Moving on to Switzerland, where citizens took to the streets to advocate for the legalization of same-sex marriage, which will be voted on September 26th as part of the national referendum. Right now, same-sex Swiss couples can have civil unions, but not marry, which makes adoption, fertility treatments, and citizenship for foreign partners more difficult. Here in America, 20 red states led by Tennessee have sued the Biden administration because of its promise to protect the transgender students from discrimination. Their suit claims that the administration has misconstrued the meaning of anti-discrimination provisions like Title IX and the Civil Rights Act by applying them to locker rooms, showers, and bathrooms. But in more positive news, because we could all use some of that. A federal judge rejected a Christian therapist's attempt to overturn a conversion therapy ban in Washington state. The judge said the ban did not violate First Amendment rights and in fact protects youth from the trauma and harm of conversion therapy. While there are still tons of challenges we face at home and abroad, there are still two reasons to remain hopeful. Two very cute reasons. On social media, Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg and his husband Chastin each shared a post announcing the birth of their two children, Penelope Rose and Joseph August Buttigieg. Though not yet confirmed, it is believed that Penelope and Joseph are twins, with Joseph being named after Pete's father. Just last month, Pete shared on Twitter that he and Chastin had become parents, though the process wasn't complete yet. The couple has spoken publicly about wanting children since early 2020. In his memoir, I Have Something to Tell You, Chastin revealed that he and Pete had discussed having kids even before they were married. They've also been open about having difficulty adopting. Chastin told the Washington Post, it's a really weird cycle of anger and frustration and hope. You think it's finally happening and you get so excited and then it's gone. But Chastin knew he'd tell his kids someday, we tried so hard for you, we waited so long for you. As the first openly gay cabinet member and first out politician to forge a major presidential campaign, Pete and his husband are definitely helping to bring a new face to love and family to mainstream America and politics. And I am here for it. Following Pete's August tweet, Anise Parker from the Victory Institute, which is an organization that prepares LGBTQ candidates for the campaign trail, spoke about the importance of that representation. She said in a statement, as parents, Pete and Chastin will now shine a national spotlight on LGBTQ families who often face daunting challenges because of outdated policies that narrowly define what families are. So adorable. So congrats again to the couple. And on that note, that does it for this week in Culture Q. I'm Shira Lazar. And I'm Andy Luani. Thanks for sticking around for all the Culture Q updates this week. We're here Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern, live and on demand, only on Reverie. We'll see you next week.